testing, testing. Good evening. <laughs> My name is Wojtek Janus. I'm uh, the father of the bride. On behalf of Janus and Selinski families, I would like to welcome you all. Thank you for joining us today on this wonderful occasion. I know that some of you have traveled very far to be here. I've been told that we have people from many different states, and let's see if I remember them all. Uh, of course, Ohio, Virginia, Tennessee, Florida, all right, Michigan, yeah, In Indiana, Colorado, Minnesota, Texas, California. Did I get them all? Did I miss anybody? Georgia, I'm sorry. All right, Georgia. We also have some people with us to travel across the ocean to be here. People from Poland and Germany. So, yes, everybody, thank you very much uh, for, making, for making the trip. I would like to take the moment to also honor the most senior members of both families. Uh, Paul's grandparents are here with us today. Thank you very much for being here. Dominika's parents couldn't be here today, but I know they have been monitoring the whole uh, uh, festivities all, all day long, so I know their thoughts are with us, so uh, we appreciate them very much. I would like to take this moment also to take my wife for raising, for raising such an amazing young woman with me. I think today, maybe for the first time, we get to say confidently, honey, mission accomplished. I would like to congratulate Jack and Paul for raising such an incredible young man. I know they are very proud of him every day, every day. And now Joanna and I are also proud to have him as our daughter's husband. Thank you. I had uh, 27 years to prepare for this speech. But then I saw my daughter today uh, in her wedding gown. And I realized that nothing really prepares you for a moment like this. Doesn't she look absolutely stunning? Those of you who know me uh, know that Dominica has always been my princess. And I've been told that she can do pretty much anything she wanted with me. And I could never refuse her. And I suspect that secretly she also knew that. And maybe took advantage of it once or twice. Probably. Yeah, yeah she did. What? 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 When, when you are a father of a princess, you do things, okay? Whether this is searching for a lost doll Dee Dee in the woods, or driving to see a Jonas Brothers concert in another state, or, or, or diving down on the concrete floor at Best Buy just to break her fall. You do things, you just do them. You do them happily, you don't even realize you're doing them. And as you do them, you also know that this spell that the princess cast on you one day will be cast on another man who will then call her his queen. But even then, but even then you know that she will never, ever, ever stop being your princess. And I have to tell you, 27 years, it just went by like in a flash. It feels like an hour. It just feels like yesterday. We just brought her from a hospital, and in a very short few years, she turned into this daredevil child, doing things that would make any parent's heart stop. Always doing cartwheels, or hanging upside down, always bruised with uh, scraped knees, and the looks, the looks that Joanna and I were getting in the doctor's office, you have no idea. <laughs> they were abusing the child. Really. Then in her school years, she was a competitive dancer, gymnast, a diver, cheerleader. She was also a social butterfly, often prioritizing fun over work. Um, that, that changed when she went to college, got her grade, uh, grades up. She rocked the Tri-Delta sorority. Uh, eventually graduated with double major, business and marketing, started working, and somehow she always manages to make herself indispensable. I know this because every time she takes time off work, 
The company seems to go into state of panic, so I don't know what that is. Um, but, but at the same time, look, you, those of you who know her, um, you know that she has this incredible, incredible talent for organizing, planning things. And if there was any doubt, by the way, today's festivities are a living proof of that. Uh, yeah. So uh, yeah, 27 years, 27 years, so many, so many memories, so many memories, too, uh, too many to recall. I still vividly remember her, her crawling across the carpet in our living room, and I remember her wet herself, and I remember her uh, fall off the bike, and I remember her belt out karaoke, and cry herself to sleep, and, and that was just one birthday party, by the way. <laughs> Yeah, um, but seriously, seriously, we fathers of daughters um, often get things wrong. Uh, we simply play catch up because we don't see things for what they really are. And when our eyes are seeing this vivacious teenager, our mind still kind of tells us, well, this is this innocent little young girl. And then by the time our mind accepts the teenager, our eyes are already seeing this, this adventurous young woman. And, and I don't know, maybe, maybe this today is for the first time I'm looking at Dominican and I'm seeing this, this, this wonderful, gorgeous bride who is uh, deeply in love and looking forward to her life together with Paul. And maybe for the first time I know in my mind that what my eyes are telling me is true. Yeah, looking, <laughs> looking uh, forward to her life with Paul. Now, you don't know this, but... Um, when I first heard about Paul, it was in a very fuzzy and very accidental way. It was summer of 2020, and Dominica's phone started lighting up with all these text messages, or she would suddenly be unavailable to some family function on a very short notice. And it was driving me crazy, because we as a family have zero respect for each other's privacy. So this was, you know, was very, very, very disturbing. And, um, and then she started dropping some hints. And uh, it was like, well, he fought a fire last night. Uh, he saved a man's life today. Uh, oh, he went on some underwater recovery action. Um, yeah, he's thinking of going hunting. And this was the period of my life when I was almost certain that my daughter is dating Chuck Norris. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. but, but, you know, but then we met Chuck, Paul, oh, and we realized he's a tough guy, he's a tough guy, but he has a soft and romantic, romantic side. He's uh, hardworking and ambitious, he values family very much, and he respects tradition. Uh, for example, before proposing to Dominica, he came to see Joanna and me and to ask for a blessing, and I can only appreciate how scary and nerve-wracking it must have been. Um, but we do appreciate it. It meant a lot to us, and it showed uh, showed maturity. It showed respect. So I have to say that between that gesture and the bottle of ten-year-old bourbon that he had, with him, that pretty much sealed the deal. Um, yeah, it helped. And uh, but you know, in all honesty, it was really about about the way Dominica looked at you, and the way Dominica talked about you. And maybe even more importantly, the way you looked at her, and the way you talked about her, and the way you treated her. And I know from the bottom of my heart that you will always, always treat her well. And I'm not just saying this because of all the guns I own. Just, just... <laughs> so, Paul, I know it's not easy to pick a partner for life. I know it's not easy. You know what they say? They say, pick a woman who will take care of you who's compassionate. They say, pick a woman who knows how to maintain a home. They say, uh, pick a woman who's, who's a lot of sex appeal. Pick a woman uh, who will be always faithful to you. They also say that uh, you should never, ever, ever, under any circumstances, let those four women meet each other. <laughs> Uh, luckily, luckily you won't have to deal with us because you know you have all these qualities in Dominica. So, so lucky you. Um, but on top of everything else, you, I'm sure you've noticed that you got yourself a Polish woman. 
And let me tell you something. I know a little bit about Polish women, okay? I was raised by one, married to one for over 30 years, and I raised one myself. So I was trying to think, how do I summarize this thing for you? And I, I, I'm the best I could come up with, like, you're in for a heck of a ride, my friend. I'll, I'll tell you this. Because, you know, she will make you do things, right? And, you know, she will make you clean parts of the house that you didn't even know you had. Right? She will always make you dress up when you go out. She will, um, she won't let you touch the food before the guests arrive. <laughs> She will make you dance to Italian disco music. Yeah, she will probably yell at you in two languages. She's probably doing all those things already. And, but, but you know what, but there's a silver lining. But she will also be a true partner in everything you do. She will always have your back. She will plan and organize things and do them so you don't have to. She will always look good. And, um, Occasionally, maybe she will cook you some good Polish uh, Polish food, so that also helps. Uh, you know, so overall, you're, you're, it's, I think that's a pretty good deal. You just have to remember one thing. Um, uh, a, a man who gives in when he's wrong is a wise man, but a man who gives in even when he's right is happily married. <laughs> yeah. But, had to be married, what does that really mean? I have to say that from my experience, it's really not about trying to be happy all the time. It's really about being together for the happy times, being together for the mundane times, and overcoming difficult times together, but also enjoying the times that you can only have with each other. They say that life is a journey, and you know, being married is a big part of it, very rewarding part of it. And I know that as long as you head in the same direction, you'll be just fine. And as you go on that journey, remember that love never really says, this is what I want from you. It only says, I want you. That's all it does. So remember always hold each other more important than any other person, place, or thing. It is said that being married is not about finding somebody you can live with. It is about finding somebody you cannot live without. And I know you have found that with each other. I know that Dominica is going to be a great wife. And I know this because she learned from the past. <laughs> And if she's anything like her mother, she'll be making you smile even 20, 30, 50 years down the road. I know that uh, Paul's gonna be a great husband, spend enough time with him, got to know him real well, and I know the family. He is a man of a strong character, and I, I tell you, there's nothing, absolutely nothing, that makes a father happier than knowing that his daughter is gonna have a stronger man by her side. Um, one of the great American philosophers, Garth Brooks, <laughs> said that you're, really, you're never really wealthy until you have something that money cannot buy. And I, I look around this room, all your friends, all the family, I think living proof of all the wonderful relationships that you have formed over the years. And I look at you two, sharing love and sharing friendship. And I can't believe how wealthy you already are. I, of course, I cannot predict the future, nobody can. Many years from now, a lot of things will have happened. But wherever you are and whatever you do, I know you will always have each other's love and you will always have ours. With that, please, Join me, raise your glasses, and join me in toasting the newlyweds to Paul, the newest members of our family, to Dominica, my princess. May your love be modern enough to withstand the times, and may it be old-fashioned enough to last forever. Nazdravie!
Thank you. Thank you.